And I think that rounds it up. We can get into our main topic. We've got a ton of predictions. We, <laughs> we were having some fun with it last year, uh, the beginning of this year, I should say. So uh, why don't we just go rattle them through one by one? What let's do you do think? It. Of course, let's start with the juiciest and biggest one of them all, the security token market cap predictions. This is where we predicted each what is both the total market cap of the secondary market as well as the total volume throughout the entire year. Uh, and we actually had some interesting predictions. Uh, we reversed kind of our original trends. Uh, and Kyle went and predicted $2 billion for the total market cap. And I predicted $3 billion for the total market cap. But we reversed our trend for the volume. And actually, right. Kyle actually said $300 million in total trading volume, whereas I only said $225 million in total trade volume. Uh, and Kyle... How did we do? So we started the year at around a $300 million market cap, just to give everybody perspective on where we were looking and how this was projected forward. And now we're looking at about a one to 1.1 billion market cap that's tracked by security token markets. So based off that estimate, we were both undershot, unfortunately this year, but I don't think that that fully counts some of these private blockchains. So we just covered figure who has done like four billion in trading volume, I believe. Yeah, and there's Tokeny, all, right? Tokeny internationally. Had a $20 billion dollar company tokenized. And those in fact are in iStocks. We're still trying to work in and figure out the ways to, to integrate the Singapore financial institutions and their right. data. So I think that from the market cap perspective, we can definitely probably say that we're both wrong and undershot. That's what right. the actual real, you know. Yeah, I think what's reported is is light, but as you said, what's actually out there is far, far, far bigger. Uh, $4.7 billion from figure alone would totally wipe out all of our guesses <laughs> yeah. right there. So that's awesome news. Moving on, we actually uh, went ahead and made some regulatory expectations here. I thought that there would be some kind of a crypto bill that would pass through the legislation mm. at some point throughout this year. And unfortunately, <sighs> Still that did not happened. happen. I think it was something like over two dozen bills. We have reported been submitted on all of them. On a the lot show. of different things, but nothing ever made its way through. And maybe that's a good thing, but that leaves regulators with the existing framework to push. And that's actually where you predicted that there would be an additional expansion of the accreditation definition. That was for good reason. There was hints that perhaps the SEC would expand based on a certain knowledge test Graduate or perhaps degrees. certain degrees. Unfortunately, they only made it possible for investment bankers to also qualify and instead have done nothing since. Um, that might be because there was a new SEC regime that came in about. But as we mentioned earlier, there's probably a good chance that they're now going to revisit the accreditation definition for inflation, which means mm. that it's likely going to restrict the number of people that end up qualifying. So that's that's I mean, you hate to say it. I was excited about this with the idea that we could democratize capital markets. But I think the, the, the good thing to take out of this, at least, is that with the advent of, of Reg A pluses and Reg CFs being a viable opportunity, as well totally. as 144 allowing for retail trading on secondary markets, that accreditation thing actually may not matter quite as much in the future as it once did. So hopefully that's where we can look forward. <laughs> But you were right about this next one, Kyle. You actually had predicted that a major U.S. bank would use the blockchain for a product. I mean, earlier, just in this episode, we announced that Franklin Templeton went ahead and launched a mutual fund on the blockchain. And we've seen it in a couple other big examples. And you actually also predicted, and I think correctly, that they would also get involved in DeFi. And although not a U.S. Uh, institution, we did see Societe Generale, who had tokenized the bond, go ahead and submit to MakerDAO to go ahead and leverage their platform for liquidity. So that is a major, major example of yeah. a giant bank. That's a top 50 bank, folks, in the entire world leveraging DeFi for their tokenized uh, product. Yeah, specifically decentralized governance, which is kind of a fascinating perspective here that they submitted a proposal to be voted on by the greater community. That's a fascinating piece of this kind of, you know, there's the corporation, there's the large investment banks coordinating and cooperating with the other members of, you know, the consensus of MakerDAO. A fascinating perspective to see how that continues to grow, those relationships between the traditional institutions and, you know, these new nodes or these master nodes that make a lot of the, you know, the decisions on behalf of smart contracts. Also, we saw Bank of America working with Paxos to settle all of their securities on chain. We'll see if it's, you know, how quickly that happens. But that announcement came out and they've recorded transactions on chain working with Paxos. So there have been a lot of examples of banks really starting to get involved on the security token side in terms of settling their assets on chain. 
And I ended up making some predictions on the infrastructure, folks. Uh, I had actually thought that over $300 million would be invested into security token infrastructure companies. That's absolutely the case. We've seen some monster rounds be announced for Securitize, for Figure, for many of the other players in the space. In fact, I had predicted that a major bank would be involved in one of those rounds, and we did see Morgan Stanley uh, actually participate and lead the round into Securitize. So I think that's definitely a check. Uh, but what may be not so correct was that I predicted that there would be a lot of M&A activity, specifically two companies getting rescued. Uh, and I think that was definitely probably the case between Open Finance and INX. Yeah. Uh, we'd known and, and reported there were some issues. There was one. And then INX came in. But I don't think we could come up with a second one that was really, you know, a good old fashioned, I'm going to, you know, save this company through a classic M&A opportunity. So I didn't get that one. One out of two. Right. You were close. You were definitely on the right track. And it seems like the, the INX acquisition kind of fit right in your prediction, at least. And uh, your prediction wasn't, the next one wasn't so right either. A hundred million dedicated S. STO fund. And, yeah, you know, my explain idea was, that. What is a dedicated STO yeah, fund? Yeah, I thought we were going to see a few funds come out and, and dedicate some capital towards investing specifically in security token offerings. Now, we did see a $5 million fund launched by Green Pro in the Crypto SX ecosystem. So Fine. I was about a 20th of the way there with my prediction. Even market makers, we talked about this before, but I figured somebody was going to launch a fund to, to kind of provide some liquidity here. It didn't quite happen, but that opportunity is still Still there for anybody listening that wants to jump in and participate. Well, and then we did actually make some predictions around the market. I uh, had some big numbers. We got a little excited. I think we were feeling it a little bit. Yeah. I said that there would be 200 listings over 20 different platforms with a thousand primary offerings uh, in, in the course of 2021. So let's review. Uh, 200 listings, what do you think? I think we're there. I think we've got over 200 thanks to Realty listing, 138 different real estate properties and counting. We've got obviously the, the main, you know, crew here as well as internationally i think right. you know there's think the, about all the different players that we actually don't necessarily have insight to there's a ton of players in singapore i stocks hg exchange you know addx so we're already tracking uh, 200 eight, on you know, security token exactly market, so. so there's definitely a bunch of different things we got the, the markets there. there but a thousand offerings mm. it's a possibility we certainly didn't report it so it's definitely a clear no on that front but as we saw earlier with the market we don't know how many security tokens have come to market that right. we actually didn't report on, potentially NFTs that end up qualifying as securities, uh, or just good old fashioned security tokens that happened uh, in parts of the world that we just don't have any coverage on. Potentially saying a thousand tokenized assets is potentially an angle that we could we could give you the 50-50 uh, the on it. We're going to let it slide. But what was a certain accurate prediction, well done Kyle, was on Coinbase. They did do a successful IPO. But unfortunately, you only did get it half right because you were hoping that they would also leverage their platform for security token trading. They had that ATS they and they just all shut it down. down. <laughs> they just didn't do it. They just haven't done it. But I got the IPO right, so we'll take that. If only they would have done a security token instead. And you, Herwig, a $100 million Series D security token offering would have been electric. We saw the $75 million Reg A plus from Exodus, but we just couldn't quite I, get I had there. some specifics. I had it be venture capital backed. It had to be a Series D. So this means it was a you know a very institutional startup. And unfortunately, no dice, no use case for a security token yet there. So regardless, very fascinating. And your final prediction. My final prediction. It. This was it, folks. I said that 50% of all primary offerings in the market would be real estate focused. Mm. We saw Nolan Reynolds come to market with a big deal. We saw Aspen Coin list. We've certainly, we talked about Realty bringing on a couple hundred assets, figures doing HELOCs. How do you feel about this one? I, you know, 50% probably not, but potentially one of the most tokenized industries, if not the most, probably. I think so. But 50%, so. maybe not. And it depends on the volume versus uh, the number of Right, issues. exactly. Is it trading? Is it volume of assets? We, we won't get into the nuances. I know you're all dying to hear our <laughs> new predictions, but you'll have to sit tight till next year. And meanwhile, happy holidays and happy new year. Please, hopefully you enjoyed the show this year. We are so open to suggestions, feedback. We continuously want to make the show better for you. 
We've got a lot of great stuff coming out as well from the Security Token Market team next year. I know we're both super, super oh, excited. Cannot wait. Don't forget that we are still open for now for pledges. If you're interested in the Security Token Market crowdfund, you can go learn more about that link in the bio. And of course, follow all of our socials and securitytokenmarket.com for all of the information on our, our blogs, our news, our research reports. There will be some major, major things coming out. And remember, we've now launched a referral program for our newsletter, you can win STM swag, coffee cups, and even a trip to Miami to get Woo! dinner with the What's Drippin' team. So if you want to check that out, you can find out more information in our link in bio as well. Meanwhile, we hope to catch you next year, and happy tokenizing.